my friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms, where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem, and I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. On Friday afternoons, she makes popcorn for everyone. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend and talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. The musician. There once was a little girl named Rain Angel. She loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own and looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano. She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her. Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. The circus. Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys. Balloons and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, 
and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store, and I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef, and sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section, where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta, such as macaroni and spaghetti. And of course, you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. A day at the beach. When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles. Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand. Building sandcastles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sandcastle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. 
The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket and feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach and enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day. Making cookies. Mmm, something smells good. My friend's mom is making cookies. They are chocolate chip, my favorite. I think I'll go home and ask my mom if we can make cookies too. I run all the way home and rush through the door. I yell, "Mom, mom!" She comes out from her bedroom, her eyes wide. What? She answers, a little worried. I breathlessly ask if we can please, pretty please, make cookies. She smiles and says, "I guess so." Yes, I reply. First, mom tells me to get out the cooking stuff, so I get out the mixer and bowl, the measuring cups and spoons, and the cookie sheets. Then she tells me to get out the recipe book. I remind her that the recipe is on the chocolate chip package. Right, she says. Then she asks me to look at the recipe and get out the things we need, like flour, sugar, and butter. We set the oven temperature to three hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Then we mix all the flour and other stuff ingredients together. Last, we added the chocolate chips. We drop the batter by big teaspoons full onto the cookie sheets. We set the timer for twelve minutes and just sit back and enjoy the good smell. The buzzer rings. We take the cookies out. Oh, do they look good! We don't even wait for them to cool down. Both mom and I get a big glass of cold milk and two big warm cookies each. Yum yum. Want to join us? Stars in the midnight sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. This is a little poem song I always say when I'm outside and I see the stars. When I see the first star of the night, I always say this one: Star light. Star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Do you have a special thing to say about the stars? Stars are beautiful, bright spots in the sky. Stars are usually seen at night when it is dark. We can't see them in the daytime because the sun is so bright, the brightest star of all. I like staying up late just to look at the stars. One time I was outside at midnight, and the stars seemed to sparkle and dance. They really did look like diamonds dancing in the sky. If you watch the stars long enough, you may see a falling star or a shooting star. I have seen both. A falling star is where the star just seems to drop, and it leaves a trail of what appears like stardust. A shooting star is very beautiful. It shoots across the sky, leaving a long trail of colorful stardust. Shooting stars seem to brighten up the whole sky. They usually seem quite close to Earth. Have you ever watched the stars and got the urge to reach out and touch them, or even join them in their secret dance? I wonder what it'd be like to see a star up close. Would it look like the moon? Maybe one day when I am older, I will go up in a rocket ship and visit the dancing stars in the midnight sky. Music. A song comes on the radio. My lips start to move, singing along. My fingers start to snap. My feet begin to tap. The music sinks deep into my soul. I listen to the music as it fills my brain, and I remember when I used to sing. I sang in front of huge crowds. I loved it when they watched me and clapped for me when I was finished. Letting out my feelings when I was sad, mad, happy, or glad. Was when I would sing. I sang in the shower. I sang in the rain. 
I sang in church. I sang walking down the street. Music has always been a big part of my life. It seems like I was a baby when I started playing the piano. I would sit on my sister's lap while she played the piano, and I would bang on the keys. I remember sitting beside her and learning how to sing. I sang my little lungs out. As I grew, I listened to other singers on tapes, the radio, and CDs. I took those things that I had heard from different singers and made myself sound like them. Soon, I could take what I had heard all my life and make it into my own sound. I have always liked singing jazz and blues. I don't listen to jazz and blues a lot, however. I listen to pop, rock, classical, and some country. As you can see, I like many types of music. I have seen musicals too, like Phantom of the Opera and Les Misérables. Those musicals were amazing. They were such bright costumes and stage sets, not to mention the wonderful songs and singing. Music has been on this earth since the beginning of time, and it touches everyone in a different way. I know it has not only touched mine, but is a big part of my very being. First date, ring ring. The phone is ringing. My mother answers it. Hello, she says. It is for me. When I pick up the phone, I hear a boy's voice. It is a boy I go to school with. This boy is very nice, and he is cute too. He asks me if I want to go out for dinner with him tonight. I say yes. He's going to pick me up at 5:30 p.m. in the evening. He has a nice red car. Before he picks me up, I have to find an outfit to wear. I am nervous and don't know what to wear, so my sister picks out an outfit for me. I feel excited and have the sensation of butterflies in my stomach. The inside of my hands are damp too. I put on my outfit and do my hair. My sister gives me some nice clips to put in my hair. Ding dong, the doorbell buzzes. My date is here. I hurry to the door so I can greet him. He tells me that I look nice and that we are going to a place called M T Bellies. When we arrive at M T Bellies, there is loud music playing. A smiling waitress comes who serves us our food. I order a large Caesar salad. My date orders steak. When it arrives, the food looks and is delicious. The waitress asks us if we want dessert after we've finished, but we are too full, so we ask for our bill to pay. My date pays for the meal. I brought money just in case we would share the cost. When we leave the restaurant, we go for a walk by the river. It is a beautiful night. I am enjoying my first date. I am laughing and having fun. It is time for us to go home, so my date takes me home. I smile and thank him for the great time. I hope he'll ask me out again. University. It's time to sign up for school. This year, Natalie is going to Brock University. She has never been to university before. She is a little bit scared. She hopes she meets nice new friends. Natalie stood in line to get her picture taken. The picture was put on a card. The card was her picture ID, identification. She would use this card if she needed to buy books from the school bookstore, if she wanted to get a book from the library, or if she wanted to use the pool. After all of the signing up and money was paid, Natalie went out to lunch with her mother. Mom, I'm kind of scared about going to school. I'm going to be the youngest kid there. I don't know how to take notes. The teachers might be mean. Natalie rambled on. Her mom just calmed her down and said, "Take one day at a time, Natalie. Worry only about today." Hmm. You're right, mom. Thanks. Natalie was very scared on the first day of school. 
She made sure she had all of the books she needed and lots of pens, pencils, and erasers. She walked into the front of the building and went on her way to try and find her classroom. Natalie got through her classes and met a lot of new people, nice people. Her classes seemed to go by really fast, and the day went by even faster. When Natalie got home, she was so excited. She told her mom that classes weren't all that scary. The students and the teachers weren't scary either. Natalie knew that the schoolwork would be hard, but she felt good about the people she had met that day. She knew she'd have a good year. Health. Our health is very important to us. People can have good jobs, money, or good looks. However, if they become sick, those things don't mean a thing. It is wonderful to feel good. Feeling good isn't just about our body; it is also about our mind and spirit. We need to feel good in every area of our life. One of the things we can do to be healthy is to get enough sleep. If we don't sleep well or enough, it hurts our body. It is during sleep that our body restores itself. Everybody knows we should also eat good foods. We need milk products, meats, fruits, and vegetables, and breads and cereals. We shouldn't eat too much fat or sugar things either. Of course, we just shouldn't eat too much at all. Another thing that is very important is water. Most people, and we need to keep that replaced with good water, often. Exercise is very good for both our body and mind. It is good for our heart, lungs, muscles, and bones. It gets oxygen to our brain to help us think better. It can help us be smarter. Doing things that we believe are right and good gives us peace inside. It makes us nicer people and is good for our spirit. When we do what we know is right, it helps to reduce stress, which isn't good for any part of us. When we take care of our body, mind, and spirit, we feel good all over and inside too. What a beautiful world this would be if we could all work at doing these things for ourselves and also trying to be a help to others. Halloween. Ghosts, goblins, witches, princes and princesses, kings, queens, skeletons—so many of these things are walking down my street. Oh no! They are coming to my door. The doorbell chimes. And I slowly open the door. There, standing on my front porch, is a little ghost and a cute little witch. They hold up a bag and say, "Trick or treat." I put candy into their bags, and they smile and say, "Thank you." Every October thirty-first is Halloween. That is when children dress up as different things, not just funny people, but things like animals or fruits or vegetables. They go from door to door and get different candies or little toys from the people in the houses. Some children, who are not very nice, will do naughty things to houses where people are not home, like throwing eggs at their windows. I think that is bad. Sometimes people decorate their houses for this day. Some of the houses can be pretty scary. They'll have scary noises coming from a tape recorder too. However, it's only for a few days out of the year, so we may as well have fun with it. This year, my brother is dressing up as a skeleton, and I'm dressing up as a bride. I am wearing my mom's wedding dress. It is fun dressing up in costumes and putting on lots of makeup. Sometimes our friends don't even know who we really are. The best part of Halloween is the candy, of course. I once got an entire garbage bag full of candy. My mom and dad took it away because I was eating too much. Mom gave me a piece of candy every day, though. If you eat too much candy, you can get a stomach ache. You need to remember to brush your teeth often too, so you don't get cavities. Still, that candy sure does taste good. 
Well, it's time to go trick or treating. So off I go, door to door, getting yummy candy and hearing people say, "Oh, aren't you pretty?" New Year's, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! What is New Year's? Well, to me, a new year is when the date of the year changes. This year it is two thousand and one, and on December thirty-first at midnight, it will change to two thousand and two. I wonder who invented the changing of the years, and how it was made the way it is. It must have been someone a long time ago, since it's already two thousand and one. When New Year's comes closer, a lot of people talk about New Year's resolutions. I don't bother making resolutions because I never do them anyway. And the ones I do make are usually ones that will happen anyway. I guess it's just common sense. The biggest reason why I like New Year's is because of the fireworks that we have here in Canada and many other countries too. You should see some of the fireworks that go off. There are many different colors. There's pink, blue, purple, yellow, green, red, even white, silver, and gold. Fireworks make loud bangs, squeals, siren sounds, and sometimes all at once. There are lots of different sounds, but I can't even explain what they are all like. Fireworks are best when it's very dark outside. They light up the whole sky. Sometimes they look as though they are going to fall on you. I like New Year's because it's fun in other ways, but the fireworks are the best. You can buy fireworks to use for your own fireworks show. However, you have to be careful that no one gets burned or hurt. Usually, there are parties at New Year's. Some people really dress up fancy and even wear masks. They don't know who one another is until midnight when they take their masks off. As midnight comes very close, everybody begins to count down, and then everyone yells out "Happy New Year's!" and bangs pots and pans, or rings bells, or honk horns. Join me in the countdown on New Year's Eve. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! More music. I like music. I have always liked music. Even when I was very young, I liked music. I like to listen to it and to make it. When I was a little girl, listening to nice music would sometimes make me cry. That may seem silly, but the music was so pretty that I cried. As I grew older, I started to take piano lessons. I was not very good at first. But after a while, I got better. Also, as I grew older, I started to take violin lessons. I did not sound very good at all at first, but I improved. When I was a teenager in high school, I made sure I had music classes every year. Those were the classes I enjoyed most of all. Everyone loved music, and we had a lot of fun. I started to take private singing lessons while I was in high school too. I also sang in the choir, played in a band, and acted in plays in high school. The plays were all musicals, so I got to sing and dance and enjoy music that way also. It was so much fun pretending to be other people. When I finished high school, I went to university to learn how to be a music teacher. That was a lot of fun because every day I was with other people who loved music as much as I do. Mostly, I played the piano, but I also learned how to play the drums, a saxophone, a trombone, a French horn, a clarinet, a flute, which I really was not very good at, and a viola. I took more singing lessons too. We did not have plays to sing and act in, but I sang in the university choir. Some years, I played the piano for other students who were learning other instruments. One year, I played duets with another girl who was also there to play piano. 
She and I made sure we played fast, funny songs, so we really enjoyed ourselves doing it. Now I am a music teacher. I do not have a lot of students, not as many as I used to have anyway. I still find it very rewarding. I like to see people who start off not knowing very much, if anything, and go on to be very good at creating music. I still love listening to music, also. Music makes me happy when I am sad. It makes me want to dance or sing when I'm already happy. Mostly, music just makes me glad that I am me and that music is alive in me. Babies. My baby is asleep in my arms. Her soft cheek rests against my chest, while her sweet breath puffs gently on my skin. Her tiny lips are puckered a bit. Her little eyelids flutter. I wonder what she dreams about as she sleeps. Does she dream? I have heard her whimper in her sleep. Sometimes she awakens with a scream. What is so scary in her little baby dreams? Once I heard her giggle as she slept. Her dreams must have been sweet that day. I have had three babies. The one I am holding now is my last one. My other babies are grown up more and now at school. I love their childish play and laughter. I miss their baby dimples and their baby sounds and smells. There is such joy in the birth of a new baby. We hear their first little cry, telling us all is well with their small world. We feel their newborn skin, wrinkled, soft, and slightly damp. We feel each little limb, and are filled with wonder, in humility. Life is good as baby takes its first food from its mother. Family gathers around, each waiting to hold and love this newest member. Each time the baby cries. Its mom worries, and their bond becomes stronger. Babies have their own special smell. Some have described it as milk and innocence. It is the sweetest smell on earth, I think. It cannot be copied. Somehow, it disappears as baby grows. I love to hear my baby talk. Once in a while, I can even understand a little bit. She is so serious in her baby talk that I just have to pick her up and hug her. I love to hear her say "mummy." When my baby is tickled, or when the dog or her big brothers do something funny, it is so sweet to hear her baby laugh. It's such a cute little giggle. Sometimes she laughs so hard, her face turns red, tears come to her eyes, and she falls down weak with the laughter. Those who watch her can't help but laugh too. I hope she always laughs so easily. The parents watch with pride and joy as baby grows and has many firsts. There is the first time baby sleeps through the night, rolls over, smiles, laughs, hugs and kisses. Then there is the first tooth, crawling, first step and first word. With each new first. The baby becomes less a baby. These steps are a little sad to parents too, because they know they're losing their baby. However, to a mother, even an adult child is still her baby. My baby is not perfect. Sometimes she gets mad or whines for no reason, but to me, she is still beautiful. Her smiles more than make up for her tears. Her hugs wipe away when she's been bad. I intend to cherish each moment with my baby while I can. Bedtime. I am almost nine years old, and my bedtime is eight thirty p.m. I think that is so unfair. I think I am old enough to stay up until at least nine p.m. My parents say that I have to go to bed early because I have school the next day. I can't wait until I am grown up and can stay awake as long as I want. Even though I think I should be able to go to bed later, I do like our nighttime routine. At about eight fifteen p.m., my mom sends us upstairs to put on our pajamas.
When we come back downstairs, we read together. Sometimes mom will read to us, and sometimes we will read to her. If dad is not working, he will sometimes read too. Mostly it is mom we read with, though. When we read, mom helps us with words we cannot read. We have to try and sound the word out, but if we are really stuck, she will help us. If we come to a place in our reading where we do not understand the meaning of what was written, we stop reading and look at mom. She will tell us what it means or help us figure it out on our own. After we are finished reading, we say goodnight to everyone in the house. First, we say goodnight to mom and give her a hug and a kiss. Then we do the same for dad, then our little sister, and then our dog. Afterwards, we go upstairs and brush our teeth. I have to do special stretching exercises for the muscles in my chest and legs, or I get pains when I run and play. I do my stretching before I get into bed. After my exercises, either my brother or I turn off the lights. We share a bedroom, so we take turns turning the light off. Before we get into bed, we say our prayers. After we get into our beds, my brother and I talk to each other for a long time. We tell each other about our day or about what we hope will happen in the future, about our friends and all sorts of other important things. After a while, we get so tired we just fall asleep in the middle of talking. Even though we go to bed at 8.30 p.m., we talk so long we don't go to sleep until about 10 o'clock p.m. I still do not know why I have to go to bed so early when I'm not even tired. Why do I like mathematics? Sometimes there is a problem in life that has no answer. Perhaps a child has trouble learning. Perhaps someone becomes ill. Perhaps... There was love, but now there is conflict. These problems are hard to solve. There is no single answer. Many people have opinions on what is the best answer. But in mathematics, there is an answer, a single answer that is right. There is no doubt. There is no argument. This answer is right. If we ask, what is five plus seven? The answer is 12. If we ask, how do you raise a child? The answer would depend on the child and the parents. Sometimes there is more than one way to reach an answer. Imagine we want to find the area of a triangle. The triangle has a right angle. The two sides surrounding the right angle are 20 millimeters and 30 millimeters. The formula for the area of a triangle is one half of base height. We could consider the 20 millimeter side as the base and 30 millimeters as the height. We could consider the 30 millimeter side as the base and the 20 millimeter side as the height. Both ways would produce the same answer. The area is 300 square millimeters. Alternatively, we could consider the base as the third side of the triangle, and then we would have to draw a height and measure it. The height would be neither 20 nor 30. But still, we would end up with the same answer. In math, the answer does not change. Another reason I like math is the way it brings order. There can be a whole set of numbers or a whole set of measurements that mean nothing until mathematics organizes them into a pattern. An average number can be found. Graphs can be drawn. The spread of the numbers and probabilities of a certain number happening can be calculated. This is like having a whole lot of dirty dishes after supper. Applying math is like washing and sorting the dishes and putting them back into the cupboard. Math is a powerful tool. Math should be our friend, and we will find more ways to use it to better our lives. My Sister's Visit to Canada My sister had never been to Canada, but came for a visit last April. I picked her up at the airport in Toronto and drove her through the traffic and multi-lane highways, 
past the grapevines and peach trees to Niagara Falls, where I live. She was very tired from the flight and soon slept. The first day, we walked to see the falls. The spray from the falls drifts high into the air and across the people standing to watch. There are people from all over the world watching the water and using their cameras. Because it was April, there was still ice beside the water, huge chunks of ice that looked like white rocks. In the river, there were floating pieces of ice moving downstream. The next day, we went to the town where the Niagara River joins Lake Ontario. The weather was warm. We walked a long way, and our feet were hot, so we went down to the edge of the water to put our feet in. One toe in was enough. The water was so cold it made our feet ache. A piece of ice drifted beside our feet. I put one foot in for a second, then out, as the pain of the cold went right through me. My sister could not understand how it could be so warm, but there was still ice. Another day, we went to see my daughter. She is living on a farm, an hour's drive away. We walked through her trees. The buds were starting to turn into leaves. We stopped and looked at the spring wildflowers. We climbed across a creek by walking over a fallen tree. We saw the footprints of raccoons by the water. There was fresh air and sunshine and blue sky. On the way home, we stopped for hamburgers and fries at a drive through restaurant. She had never been to a drive through restaurant before. Then we went to a donut shop. There are no donut shops where she lives. There was a choice of twenty different types of donuts some round, some with holes, some with frosting, some with jam inside. Each was different. The days passed quickly, and soon it was time to take her back to the airport. Some of the trees now had leaves, some of the tulips were now blooming. It was hard to say goodbye to my sister. I hope we can visit again soon. A Summer Sunday Today the sun was warm. The sky was blue with a few white clouds. It was a good day to pick strawberries. It was a good day to go to the beach. I drove to a pick your own farm where people can pick their own fruit and buy it. There the fruit is very fresh and delicious. The owner of the farm gave everyone a row to pick their strawberries. Everyone was wearing sun hats. I knelt down on the straw between the rows and picked the big, juicy red berries. I tasted one. It was warm from the sun. When I bit into it, the juice was sweet and strong. When three big pails were full, I went to pay for them and picked up some recipes for some strawberry desserts. I packed two of the pails in a cooler with some ice, and the other one we would eat at the beach. I met my daughter at the beach. She had a soft pink blanket on the sand. This beach is beside a lake, and across the lake, about fifty kilometers away, the large city can sometimes be seen. Today, the wind blew cooler air across the lake over the people on the beach. There were children playing in the water. One man helped his son dig holes in the sand, and the water ran into the holes. One lady held her children's hands and walked down into the water. Families climbed over the rocks and sat on the last rock where the water was deep. Teenagers rode bicycles and rollerblades along the path beside the beach. Adults walked and ran along this path, carrying water bottles around their waists. We sat on the blanket and ate sandwiches of meat and lettuce and strawberries from the pail. We talked and read books and lay in the sun, relaxing. We wore sunscreen, but our skin was getting hot. How cold was the water? 
we walked across the sand that almost burned our feet to the edge of the water. She went right in and lay down floating. I put my toes in and felt the chill through my body. I went up to my knees, then my thighs, but that was far enough. My whole body was cooled down. I headed back to the blanket to lay in the sun again. Soon it was time to go home. She was coming to my house for supper. We drove down the highway with the windows open and our hair blowing in the warm breeze. We cut the strawberries up and made a strawberry dessert with cake and ice cream. We sat outside in the backyard under the maple trees with the birds singing around us and ate our supper. It was a perfect ending to a relaxing summer day. My parents. My parents live in England and I live in Canada. I don't see them often. They used to come and visit on a plane, and we would pick them up at Toronto Airport. But now they are older and say the flight is too long for them. I went to visit them last year with my son, their grandson. They live by the ocean, and we could hear the sound of the waves through the bedroom window and see the blue water of the English Channel. There is an island with a castle on top in the bay. We walked many times on the beach and picked up pebbles and feathers. We visited the island and walked up the steep hill to the castle. My mother likes to cook. She makes delicious cakes and pies. We went for a hike and picked wild blackberries. She made them into a pie that smelled so good coming out of the oven and tasted so good on our plates. She has many cookbooks with recipes from all over the world and likes to try new things. She can make pastry very easily and rolls it with a rolling pin quickly. When I tried to make pastry, it sticks to the rolling pin. It has holes at the bottom of the pie and it tastes like a rock. Her pastry is crisp and tender. My father likes to garden. He grows lettuce, carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, cucumbers, and many flowers. When my mother was very ill last year, she had to stay in bed. He planted roses outside her bedroom window so she could open the curtains and see them. Their house has a small room with windows all around, and they plant seeds there in winter in small pots. The warmth from the sun makes the seeds grow, and in spring they are a good size to be planted outside. In the house beside them and in the house in front of them, there are older ladies whose husbands have died. These ladies do not drive, so my father takes my mother and the two ladies to the town for shopping every week. He helps one find her groceries because she cannot see well. He helps her take tapes of books from the library so she can listen to books instead of reading them because of her eyes. He helps them cut their grass and fix anything that is broken in the house. I am very proud of my parents. They are over 80 years old and often hurt when they move around, but still they help other people and they help each other. They have been married for over 50 years, but still my father loves my mother enough to plant roses for her to cheer her up when she was ill. THE PLANETS OF OUR SOLAR SYSTEM The planet on which we live is called the Earth. Our planet is constantly moving around the Sun, and each year the Earth travels all the way around the Sun. But there are many other planets that also travel around the Sun. Together with the Sun, the planets, and various other bodies, the Earth is part of our solar system. The planet that is closest to the Sun is Mercury. Mercury is extremely hot, and it is much smaller than the Earth. The second planet from the Sun is Venus. Venus is about the same size as the Earth. Venus is also very hot. The Earth is the third planet from the Sun. 
The Earth is unusual among the planets because it has such a large moon. The Earth is bigger than the moon, but the moon is still quite large. It takes about one month for the moon to travel around the Earth. The fourth planet from the sun is Mars. Mars is known for its red color. Mars is smaller and colder than the Earth. Mars has two very small moons. After the planet Mars, there are many small bodies called the asteroids. These rocky objects are much smaller than the planets. The first four planets are all made of rock and metal. The remaining planets, however, are mostly made of frozen gases. The fifth planet is called Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet. It has many moons that travel around it, and it also has a large red spot. The sixth planet is called Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet, and it is famous for the wide rings that surround it. These rings are made up of many smaller objects that are found in the same area. The seventh planet is called Uranus. The eighth planet is called Neptune. These planets are also gas giants, but they are smaller than Jupiter and Saturn. Both Uranus and Neptune are so far from the Sun that scientists only discovered these planets during the past few hundred years using telescopes. The other planets had all been visible to curious people for many thousands of years. The ninth planet is called Pluto. Pluto is very small, and it is much more rocky than the gas giants. Some scientists believe that. Pluto is not really a planet at all. They suggest that Pluto is the largest of many asteroids that are found at the edge of the solar system. The solar system is a vast place. So far, people have not traveled beyond the moon, but perhaps some day, human astronauts will visit the other planets of our solar system. Learning to drive. Each year, many young people learn to drive a car. For many people, learning to drive is important because the car is an important method of transportation in many places. Before learning to drive a car, it is important to understand the rules of the road. A beginning driver should already understand the many signs that are found along the roads. Also, the student driver should know the many rules about changing lanes, turning, stopping, and many other aspects of driving. In addition, the driver should be familiar with the way the car is operated. It is important to know how to use the lights, signals, brakes, accelerator, and steering wheel. When a person starts learning to drive, it may take some time to become skillful. It takes some practice to become an expert in driving a car. One must become familiar with steering, speeding up, and slowing down. At first, it is good to practice driving in a large open space, such as an empty parking lot. Here, one can practice without being a danger to anyone. When a person gains some skill in driving, it is then safe enough to practice driving on a road. Of course, a student driver must still be very careful. He or she should always have an expert driver in the car with him or her. Many beginning drivers take driving lessons from professional instructors who can teach safe driving techniques. Eventually, the young driver is ready for a driving test, which is needed to obtain a regular driver's license. This test is supervised by a government official. In the driving test, the driver must show that he or she can control the car with great skill by being able to make turns and to park the car in small spaces. But he or she must also show respect for the rules of the road by driving at a proper speed and obeying all traffic signs and signals. Of course, even when one has obtained a driver's license, it is always important to drive carefully and responsibly. 
Snow. Snow is the white substance that falls to the ground during cold weather conditions. Each tiny piece of snow, called a snowflake, is a very small amount of water that has frozen into an unusual shape. During the winter months, huge numbers of snowflakes fall to the ground, covering the land in a white blanket of snow. In many parts of the world, people never see any snow. Snow only falls when there is moisture in the air, and when the temperature falls below the freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. During the winter, snow falls instead of rain. One advantage of snow is that it allows many fun outdoor activities. Children like to play in the snow. For example, they may make a snowman by rolling snow into a large ball and then placing these balls of snow on top of each other in the shape of a person. Another fun activity in the snow is skiing. Skis are very long, thin, flat pieces of hard material that one wears on one's feet. Wearing skis allows a person to slide along the surface of the snow. People can ski down the side of a hill, traveling at great speeds. Many people find the sport of downhill skiing to be very exciting. Some people like to ski along flat ground, often traveling great distances. This sport, called cross-country skiing, is an excellent way to develop physical fitness. Of course, snow also causes some problems. Snow can make driving dangerous because falling snow makes roads slippery, and on a windy day, blowing snow can make it difficult to see very far. It can also be a lot of work to remove snow from the roads and sidewalks. Snow is a heavy substance, and it must be cleared away using a shovel or a large machine. Many people love the beauty of the land when it is covered by snow. The white covering of snow over the fields and trees can give a feeling of peace and calm. If you have never seen snow before, you should some day experience this strange and wonderful substance. Christmas. In most Western countries, Christmas is the biggest holiday of the year. People gather with their families to celebrate this day, which occurs on December twenty-fifth each year. The holiday of Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. In the Christian religion, Jesus Christ is recognized as the Son of God. During the Christmas season, many people celebrate the events of the birth of Jesus Christ. For example, they recall the three wise men who visited Jesus Christ shortly after his birth. Also, they recall that Jesus Christ was born in a manger, a place where horses are kept, because his parents could not find a place to stay. In Western countries, Christmas is also celebrated by many people who are not religious. People view Christmas as a time for being together with one's relatives. Children, parents, and grandparents gather to exchange presents and to eat special foods. The tradition of giving gifts at Christmas is unusual in one way. When children go to bed on the evening before Christmas, they hang large socks called stockings in their house. When they wake up on Christmas morning, the stockings have been filled with toys and candy. According to tradition, the presents have been given by a fat man who wears a white beard and a red suit. This man, called Santa Claus, flies around the world in a sled that is pulled by reindeer. He stops at each house and flies down the chimney to deliver his presents. In the weeks before Christmas, children are usually very well behaved. Their parents tell them that Santa Claus will only give presents to children who are good. Another Christmas tradition is the Christmas tree. People put a small tree inside their house and decorate it with various pretty objects. 
Nowadays, most people use an artificial tree instead of a real tree. The tradition of the Christmas tree is actually older than Christmas itself. The people of Europe celebrated the beginning of the winter season in this way, even before Christianity reached Europe. Christmas is certainly one of the most important and most enjoyed holidays in Western countries. Thanksgiving, an important holiday in North America, is held during the fall or autumn season of the year. This holiday is called Thanksgiving. At this time of year, people join with their relatives to reflect upon their good fortune. Thanksgiving is a holiday that has a long history in North America. It was first celebrated when English settlers arrived in the eastern part of what is now the United States during the 17th century. When they survived the first hard year, they celebrated and gave thanks to God. They invited some of the native people to their Thanksgiving celebration because the native people had helped them to survive during the hard winter. The tradition of celebrating Thanksgiving continued and spread throughout North America. Each fall, during the time of the autumn harvest, people celebrated Thanksgiving. They gave thanks for the food of the harvest and for all the good things in their lives. Today, the tradition of Thanksgiving celebration continues. Families gather to eat a large bird called a turkey. They also eat pumpkin pie. This is a sweet dessert that is made from a large orange vegetable that grows on the ground. In the United States, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, but the following day, Friday, is also a holiday, and then comes the weekend. In Canada, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the second Monday of October. The reason for the earlier celebration in Canada is that the weather is colder than in the United States. This means that the harvest happens earlier in Canada, so Thanksgiving is held at an earlier date. But in both countries, Thanksgiving is a very pleasant time of year.